I had come up with two different ideas for a puzzle game that were both based around moving on a grid. The first idea was a game where there are rule tiles for different types of terrain. Sand, grass, tall grass, rocks, and water. Each type of terrain would produce a specific sound, but tied to that sound is a loudness. The goal is to move from one end of the grid to a destination while trying to not cause aggravation from a roaming enemy. Different tiles cause alert levels to raise for different distances, and tiles like tall grass can mitigate some of the alert level if it traveled through. My other idea was a Sokoban style game where the main goal is to get a number to the end space with a matching number, while using things like math operations on cubes to manipulate the value as the grid is traversed. I was originally going to go with the sound puzzle idea, but after spending a day trying to brainstorm some of the hangups I encountered during the planning, I decided to make the number game first as I knew it would not take as long and I had wanted to be able to give a small version of the game as a gift to my dad. I began to flesh out the puzzle game on a pad of paper, drawing out the grid and numbering each tile as well as listing out what I would want in the game for puzzle elements. Altogether, I decided on four operation cubes, addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division, as well as wall cubes that could block sections of the grid. Originally, the idea was to have one exit at the end of the grid for each level, but while building out the prototype, I realized how easy it would be to have multiple exits and have them move along the grid. A big goal of this project was to stay organized with my scripts and try to make them as easy to read as possible. During the original prototype, the entire game was controlled by just three scripts, and none of them were that big. One for the player movement that would check for the cubes and a sphere cast around it, and if the direction you're moving has a cube in the way, it then casts that cube forward, but first checks if another cube is in the way of that cube. If it does move, then it subtracts the value from the brick total that's currently on that attached brick. The other script was for managing the grid itself. I created a function for each action that would be needed per level. One for spawning the end cubes on the side of their value set, one for spawning the movable cubes with their value set, and one for each type of math operation cube and their value set. By having all of these as functions, and the entire game being played on the grid, allowed for very easy level creation. Instead of having to have multiple scenes, I was able to put each level behind an if statement, and each time a bull would be made true, it would run any of the functions needed to spawn the corresponding cubes on the grid. After everything was working, I created a few levels and started to test out the mechanics and realized very fast there was one huge flaw. The player could shift a brick back and forth indefinitely to manipulate the value if not close to what they needed for the exit. After a short brainstorming session, the solution was to prevent the player from moving the square back the direction where they had just come from. This ended up taking me almost an entire day to figure out how to implement to do the correct checks, but in the end I'm really happy with the result. Every time the cube is moved, it toggles four arrows on the cube either to the main color or to a gray color. Once this was figured out and working, it was time to make a few levels. In the end, I made a total of five levels for the small build and was able to focus on a little bit of polish. During this polishing phase is when I came up with the idea for the side cubes that would fall away when you passed a level. These cubes are made by having two animations on one cube. One animation brings in the cube from a far distance where it starts transparent. The other starts at its full size and goes until it's tiny and turns transparent. I then run a for each loop looking for all the boxes on the grid with the tag box and run a coroutine toggling the triggers for each animation. After having the main scene finished, I needed to make a main menu. I really liked the falling boxes that I used for the level transitions and decided to mimic it on the main menu. I changed how the animations are toggled and instead it's on a delay that goes through the cubes, allowing each one to be triggered individually, which would create a small delay between the animations. The next thing to do was to add sounds, so I headed over to itch.io to look for audio I could use. Once I had all the audio I would need, I brought in an audio manager script that I've been using for all my projects from an old Brackies video. With all that done, I packaged it up and posted it on itch just in time for the deadline I had set for myself. While working on this project, I learned a ton about managing grids and grid movement. There should be an update coming out this Friday for it that actually has 20 new puzzles along with a lot of quality improvements. Until then, catch you later.